Hello and welcome to the AYTM.com Conjoint Experiments tutorial video. This video will show you how to leverage one of the most robust and sophisticated research methodologies, choice-based conjoint, to find the most desired combination of features for your future product, service, or package out of the tens of thousands of possible permutations. You can also use it to optimize your offering for prominent clusters of your target audience. You will learn the basics of the methodology, how to set up and launch the test, and how to interpret the data. Say you're a travel agency trying to come up with the most desirable vacation package. There are many attributes tourists will consider. Destination, convenience of transportation, included food, drinks, tours, and so on. You could ask respondents to rate the importance of all these attributes using a ranking question type, but that will only give you a rough top-line picture without understanding what the optimal trip could look like out of all the possible combinations a tourist could enjoy. Choice-based conjoint takes in all possible attributes and options within each attribute, creates a dazzling number of unique combinations out of them, and asks respondents to choose one package out of several presented side-by-side -side on the screen. After going through several of such screens, the model gets enough information to learn about each attribute and option in comparison to the others. While respondents are making a few simple binary choices in a very natural experience, designed to mimic normal shopping considerations, the model considers the implications behind such choices, calculating individual utility scores for each component. Once the survey receives enough responses for the model to be satisfied, you will be able to see the importance of each attribute, the strength of each possible package, and the incremental value that each option adds or subtracts from it, allowing you to build and fine-tune your perfect product or service or an entire product line. I'll show you how to use the intuitive, interactive simulator to interpret conjoint findings later in this video, but first let's determine which type of conjoint test is right for your purposes. We offer Conjoint Express and Conjoint Segmentation, which you can select here. Both will answer the main questions I described a minute ago, while segmentation will help you to further understand your market. I recommend using Conjoint Express when you need to minimize your cost by asking respondents to respond to the minimum number of screens. Conjoint Express will give you real-time data crunching, which is nearly unheard of in market research. Real-time analysis means no waiting on statisticians or the application to work on your insights. We achieve this amazing performance by looking at the data in aggregate. Conjoint Express will learn about the preferences of your entire sample group, or a subset of it if you apply filters, but it won't be able to tell you anything at the individual level of each respondent. By contrast, conjoint segmentation is a more expensive option, since it will ask respondents to go through approximately twice as many screens to better learn their individual preferences. When a survey is finished fielding, it will take 5 to 15 minutes to crunch the numbers using the golden standard of the market research industry, hierarchical Bayesian modeling, and will arrive at similar results, but with a much higher confidence. It will also look into clusters of respondents for you and auto-magically identify different personas if such personas emerge from the data. Let's say we identify that male respondents hate pineapple as a topping on their pizzas, while females absolutely love pineapple. Conjoint Express will measure the aggregate numbers, which will end up canceling each other out, and report that pineapple as a topping was right in the middle and wouldn't move the needle one way or the other if you offer it. Conjoint segmentation, on the other hand, will show a similar picture at the top level, but it will also discover that there were distinct personas within the sample, and that these personas had very different preferences for pizza and pineapple in particular, allowing you to fine-tune your offering to please both groups with different products on your menu. Luckily, the setup process of the experiment is identical for both types of conjoint tests, so you can choose either Conjoint Express or Conjoint Segmentation anytime, right up until you're ready to launch the survey. One of my favorite things about our version of Conjoint is that it's incredibly easy to set up and use. You don't have to have separate software, be married to a statistician, or have a heavy corporate research budget to pull it off. At the same time, it's every bit as robust and powerful as a classic manual research approach. AYTM Conjoint tests can be added just like you would add any of our other question types. You can simply drag and drop it from the sidebar and add it anywhere you want in the survey. You can also convert an existing question into a Conjoint question type. All you have to do now is fill out the list of attributes you want to test and the list of options within each attribute. In my example, I've added Paris, London, Venice, Cancun, Sydney, and other cities as options in the Destinations attribute. For vacation duration, I've listed 3 days, 7 days, and 10 days, followed by 2 weeks, 3 weeks, and 1 month. 
I always like to make surveys as engaging as possible for respondents, so I've decided to upload photos for each destination. It may be a good idea to upload photos of your product's packaging, logos, etc. if applicable. I've also decided to keep the destination attribute always at the top of my list by clicking on this anchor icon. This will apply to all possible combinations that will be shown to respondents, since it's logical and expected to show locations at the top of a vacation package description. You can also add an NA option. We've learned that while it doesn't affect the results too much, it's typically appreciated by respondents, since it gives them a way out from otherwise tough comparisons, and it helps the research model to focus on real choices by reducing noise. With the Pro Survey Authoring Package or a paid AYTM membership, we give you enough space to enter up to seven attributes with seven options each, or fewer attributes with a larger number of options. More than seven is not allowed because it'll compromise the experience on small smartphone screens. It also becomes exponentially longer to crunch the numbers beyond 25,000 combinations. As you approach the limit, We'll show a warning on the right side of the page, alerting you to the number of remaining or extra combinations so that you can appropriately manage your design. Please don't hesitate to ping us if you need assistance in entering your options. If you are a savvy statistician and would like to look at the design sheet that our platform will produce for you, you are more than welcome to process and download it here to analyze on your end. Similarly, if you happen to have a design sheet created on another platform, you can upload it to your research test here. It's not required, but some researchers like to add prohibited combinations of options or promote combinations they want to test more thoroughly. You can collapse the entire block of attributes and options to free up some space in your survey once you're done working with it. The only remaining choice is to decide how many columns to show side by side on each screen. The more you choose, the fewer screens respondents will have to go through. On the other hand, every column you add increases the cognitive load and the amount of information every respondent will have to consider to make a choice. We highly recommend testing different options and trying to select the best combination on each screen yourself before choosing the final design of your test. This line below the experiment will tell you how many questions the test will take, how many packages will be tested, and the total number of possible permutations. You can combine the conjoint test with any other questions in your survey. As with any other survey, please test your entire survey carefully in preview mode and launch it as you would any other survey on our platform. To get the most reliable insights, we recommend that you run this research model with 750 to 1500 completes. It's especially important for conjoint segmentation because a larger sample size will help increase the chances that interesting personas will be discovered. The smallest number of responses required to launch a conjoint express test is 400. If you're running a conjoint test against your own sample, it's usually a good idea to have a realistic expectation of the response rate and total number of expected completes, as well as a plan B to accelerate the study or find alternative ways to complete it. Let's now look at the results and explore how to interact with your data visualizations and interpret your findings. Both Conjoint Express and Conjoint Segmentation come with a live simulator visualization built right into the stats page. Conjoint Express will populate it once there is enough information to build a model. Please pay attention to the warnings that will alert you if the sample size is too small for drawing conclusions. Conjoint Express will seamlessly update the findings every time new responses are available on the page. Since conjoint segmentation data analysis takes a few minutes to process, it will be initiated automatically only when the survey is fully completed and out of field. During fielding, once at least 400 responses are collected, you'll have an option to manually initiate the analysis cycle and see interim results, but we recommend waiting until the full data set is available and analyzed. Let me show you how to read the conjoint findings visualization. By default, you will see an average package identified by the model. Click the Best button here to roll all columns up and show the best possible combination of the considered options. You can read what it consists of here in the highlighted horizontal line. If some of the options are truncated, you can always temporarily hide a few neighboring columns to read the full name of the option. You will notice this black callout on the left, pointing to the selected package. It shows the probability of this package being selected by respondents in your test group if it's shown next to an average package from all of the possible combinations. In my example, the model is showing that 86.9% of the time, the target audience will prefer this 10-day vacation package to Sydney with an included non-stop flight, unlimited food and drinks, high-speed internet, and an all-museums pass to another random package. 
The other important thing I can learn at first glance is the importance level of every attribute identified by the model. They're visible in the table below. You can see that the most important attribute of vacation packages in this test was the destination. It achieved 34.5% importance, while the entertainment attribute was the least important. You can sort the table by importance here and instantly update the visualization. As you may have noticed, the importance value in the table is expressed through the height of the columns in the visualization. The higher a column, the more important it is in the model and the greater impact on the desirability of the package its options will have. Let's play with it to see how it works in action. If you use your scroll wheel or trackpad, in the far right column you'll see the package change in the visualization. You can quickly check the worst package and a few in the middle. Every time, you'll be able to see the ingredients and popularity score of the selected package. You can also use the up or down arrows to navigate the package's output or click on the best or worst buttons here. You can fine tune the package at any time by substituting its options manually. Let's go back to the best package. Your goal is typically to find a package that will have a very high chance of success with your target market while being the most cost efficient for you to offer, securing the healthiest possible profit margin for your organization. From that perspective, I can quickly learn that while Sydney was the most desirable destination, if you substitute it with Venice, the probability impact will be less than 1%. Do you see this black callout that appears on the left as I roll over other options in a column? It shows you the probability impact associated with choosing each item. By clicking on an option, you will either add or subtract some perceived value from the package, and the model will tell you exactly how much of a trade-off you'll be making. Similarly, offering a one-week package will no doubt cost way less to my imaginary travel agency, while it only will cost 0.7% in perceived vacation package desirability. Using this logic, you can simulate the strength of thousands of combinations just by interacting with this visualization. Use your scroll wheel or trackpad to quickly test any option in any column. The visualization will adjust itself and show you the new combination you selected. When options have a very similar probability impact, like the top destination in my first column here, we'll have to hide some to keep the simulator clear. To see them all, you have two options. First, you can roll over the column, and we'll show as many as will fit in the list. As I showed before, when you roll over an item in the list, a black callout with a number will be rendered next to the triangle, signifying the actual location of the option on the scale, even though its label may have been pushed further up or down by other items. Second, you can expand the table view below. You can do it by clicking Expand on any of the attribute lines or by clicking Expand All in the header of the table. You can click on an option and see the corresponding column above scroll up or down to auto-select it for you. You get to see the incremental probability impacts for every option in the table, as well as the overall package strength and composition above. You can export the current view of the emulator as an image in PNG, EPS, or PDF format by clicking this icon. You can also get the 10 most desirable packages as a slide in your PowerPoint report by requesting it in the Export section of the sidebar. One of the most convenient things about conjoint experiments and other research tests on the AYTM platform, besides great interactive visualizations and ease of use, is that they're fully integrated into the stats page. This means that you can apply any combination of filters by demographics and or traits and have the numbers recrunched in almost real time for you. You can see, for example, how perception of the tested attributes and options, as well as the overall package strength, varied between genders or among age groups. You could even select a subset of respondents, such as those who travel most frequently, and view their overall perspective on the conjoint emulator. It's an infinite what-if engine, readily available to you. Everything I just showed you is applicable to both Conjoint Express and Conjoint Segmentation tests. However, there is one other crucial feature available only as a part of the Conjoint Segmentation test. Remember my example about pineapple topping on a pizza? While you can filter by traits and questions as much as you need, it's great to have a smart algorithm do this work for you as a part of the deliverable. The segmentation part in the name of this research experiment delivers on that promise will automatically look at the results of the detailed conjoint dataset, respondent by respondent, conduct sophisticated cluster analysis, and our algorithm will connect emerging subsets of the sample with other relevant information we know about them, such as traits and answers to other questions in the survey. It's a live customer persona generation engine, which will label personas with a hypothetical name and a photo to make it easier to distinguish and navigate among them. 
Every person we identify represents a group in your sample with a different sense of value and expectations regarding the attributes and options you've tested. Some may have a stronger desire to fly to Paris and visit its famous museums, while others are more passionate about nightclubs in Sydney. In the spirit of the famous findings of Howard Moskowitz, there is no such thing as a perfect spaghetti sauce. Instead, there are many perfect spaghetti sauces, tailored to the tastes of subsets of the consumers. Here we give you an engine to approximate the most prominent personas in your sample group and show a package that is perfect for them, so that you can make an informed decision about diversification of your product line and making more people happy with it, rather than trying to optimize a single product for as many people as possible. An important thing to keep in mind here is that we're not operating in terms of clear-cut filters. When we list the gender, age, and other traits under a persona, it doesn't mean that everyone in this cluster falls within this description. It tells us, though, that these traits were more prevalent in this cluster, statistically speaking, and were best suited to describe the group. Another explanation or description of the persona may exist outside of the dataset, unavailable to our algorithm, so you may want to consider bringing everything you have into the survey. We're happy to assist if you're surveying your existing customers, for example, and would like to add your existing transactional background information into the experiment. The icons on top let you toggle between each persona and the cumulative sample here. You can hide and expand the persona description section to manage your screen space. And of course, you can export the findings for each persona separately. This control in the header of the table lets you switch between market share estimates, the default mode I used in this tutorial video, and raw coefficients, also known as conjoint utility scores, which are used to calculate the market share, probability impact, package strength, etc. You can think about market share as a relative mode, helping you understand the implications of swapping any option and projected performance of the package when compared to an average package. Utility scores is an absolute mode of looking at each option and how much power the model assigned to it based on responses. This concludes the Conjoint Express and Conjoint Segmentation Tests tutorial. I encourage you to play with the demo survey available on our site and read more about this research test in the question type section. Thanks again for watching, and feel free to ping us with questions or to set up a personal demo.